co dělá léto létem. Své brány fanouškům znovu otevře sluncem zalitá pražská štvanice. Ikonický chrám s elektrizující atmosférou pod otevřeným nebem bude opět tím místem, kde se na přelomu léta střetnou ti nejlepší a nejatraktivnější zápasníci domácí scény. Ledové drinky, místa doslova na dosah dění v kleci a další pokračování příběhů vašich oblíbených bojovníků slibují jediné. Zážitek, na který budete opět vzpomínat celý rok. Akce, kterou si nechcete nechat ujít. Lístky v prodeji právě teď v síti Ticket Portál. Už tak nabitá veltrová váha oktagonu se má na co těšit. Jejich vody přichází totiž ovládnout nový žralok David Sagat Zavada. Na domácím turnaji bude chtít potvrdit, že jeho těsné porážky v UFC byly spíše náhodou. Má na svém kontě 17 vítězství, z toho 11 KO a 4 submise. Ja, wir werden sehen. Also, wir, unsere Fäuste werden sich kreuzen. Wenn er sagt, ich bin schlecht im Stand-up, dann ja. soll er erst mal gegen einen Gegner wie mich die Fäuste spüren und dann äh, wird sich noch mal die Meinung, glaube ich, im Kampf ändern. V 31 letech je David Zavada podle svých vlastních slov v nejlepší formě své kariéry a bude chtít porazit rakouského bojovníka Erhana Kartela. Ten je v Rakousku samozřejmě jedničkou váhy a jeho přezdívka je No Mercy. Deset vítězství z toho 7 KO a jedna submise. David Zavada, ich weiß, er ist ein Allrounder, gute Kämpfer, aber leicht zu knacken. Sein Schwachpunkt ist für mich eher das Stand-up. Těšit se můžeme na souboj dvou evropských jedniček svých zemí, ve které Zavada bude pod obrovským tlakem, ale také velkým favoritem celého zápasu. Ich will den Leuten hier in Frankfurt einfach nur einen schönen MMA-Kampf zeigen in jedem Bereich. Natürlich den Kampf auch mit einem Sieg abschließen und das wird sein mit einem K.O. in Runde 2 spätestens. So we are now set and ready for the main card. Here at Octagon 33, and what about we have to kick this off as we welcome No Mercy himself, Erhan Kartal. This guy hails from Vienna in Austria. An MMA record, Frank, of 10 wins, one loss. Finished, finished eight of those, seven knockouts, one submission. And then you look at his kickboxing record as well, a record of 30 and one against some really good, uh, you know, competition and on some really good promotions as well. Stepping in here, though, as a heavy underdog, but with the opportunity of fighting a legend in these regions and stealing some of his thunder. Nicknamed No Mercy because he himself, in his own words, says, I'm relentless, I look to destroy my opponent. A very aggressive striking game, a very, very forward pressure sort of fighter. Uh, but we're going to have to see how he's going to undo the puzzle that is Zavada tonight. Yeah, definitely not. I can't wait to see uh, Kartal's stand-up. Uh, you just see that that record of 30 and 1 is a kickboxer, and it shows that only a loss possible to which Jones was earlier with you, just a knee injury. So the striking pedigree that he brings and the adjustment he's going to have to make to make sure he stays off his back against Zawada, uh, I'm interested to see what he's going to bring to the table tonight. Yeah, that knee injury was against Christian Young, with, uh, as he said, that's the only loss on his record, and that, that kept him out from 2019, almost two and a bit years from competition. We've already seen and talked about a number of fighters here returning from those sort of injuries. This guy, though, I mean, his mindset is, is one of his weapons. He steps in there with no fear for no man, no fear for any position, any place. And even when he's in a bad spot, there's still no quit in his eyes. And those are the points, and you talk about it as a coach uh, 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 to me as well when you see it in fighters. You can't train that, right? It's, you've either got that in you or, or you haven't. And this is one of those fighters that is it, a key asset of his. Ability to be able to just you know push aside emotions and fear and just and just go forward and just approach life like it's just a problem. It's a math problem. Unemotional. You know what do you have to do to get from one step to the next? That's a mindset that you know once you have it just really plays dividends in, in the sport. And get ready for the welcome for this man. My goodness. 
since 2018. He has not fought in his home country of Germany. He has fought around the world, though, flying the flag, not just for a German MMA, but for Zawada MMA as well, with him and his brother. He's been in there against some of the best, Frank, including Ramazan Amiyev, Amiyev uh, Danny Robinson, as wins over the like of Abu Bakr Namagamedov and Mikhail Mik 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 Mikalski, as well as Andreas Stahl. For, for me, when we look at German MMA, and again, as an outsider, somebody who really, you know, a, a fringe fan of, of MMA, you can't really pick lots of uh, big names to come out. And I, for, for me, this is one of the fights that I think his name should have been bigger. His legacy should be bigger amongst the, 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 the German MMA fans in particular. He's a special athlete. People talk about him at the UFD gym and they say, look, as a training partner, he's perfect. He does the rounds, he turns up on time, he doesn't do anything stupid to get you injured. He said, but then when he steps in the cage, there is a switch. They said, we'll spar with him all day before, but I would never sign to fight David Zavada. Yeah, it's interesting when you see that. You're always kind of like the, uh, you know, we've seen fighters in the past that have, have been that way. We're like, man, this guy is just great. It's always that one little missing piece to make it to where they became a household name. And, and it, it, usually not the fighting aspect because that's why you're a fan of them to begin with. But it's just whatever that misconnect that all of a sudden, you know, when it does hit, everybody's like, hey, have you heard of so-and-so? And you're already on there. You already know, no, I, I'm very aware of who they are and, and what he's capable of and what they're doing. And it's always great to see that connect. At the same time, sometimes when it doesn't, you see someone like a David Zawada, and you're like, wow, this guy really has everything going, and it doesn't connect. Then you feel like such a great disappointment, a loss to the sport. Nice round of applause as he enters the cage. We look at the tail of the tape between the two. Two years the younger is Ehan No Mercy Cartel, three centimeters taller. With that height and reach advantage will be David Sagat Zavada. He has the experience and the odds on his side, 1.18 to 4.39. Let's get it underway. Let's hand it to Andre Novotny. Ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to start main card fights on Octagon 33. This fight is welter about three rounds, five minutes. And let's, let me introduce you both fighters. First, on the blue corner, he is 30 years old. He stands 180 centimeters tall. He weighed in at 79 kilos. He represents Iron Fist Vienna. And the coach is in his corner is Lokman Ulutas. He has professional record of 11 fights, 10 wins and only one loss. Fighting out of Austria, Erhan No Mercy Kartal. Red corner. He is 31 year old. He stands 183 centimeters tall and he weighed in at 77.4 kilos. He represents UFD gym and the coaches in the corner are Leo Zavada Nogueira, Ivan Diakovic and Abus Mugamedov. He has professional record of 24 fights, 17 wins, 15 chaos and only seven losses. Representing Neruda Cup team, Deep CBD, that sees it, and fighting out of Germany, David Sagat Zavada! Check to serve at all times and listen to my commands. If I say stop, you stop. Fight hard, fight fair. Touch your gloves, step back. Final touch of gloves as we get set and ready for this welterweight contest. Savada, black shorts, red corner, taking on No Mercy Cartel, white shorts, blue corner. Me, Brian Lacey, alongside Frank Mia, calling the action here in Frankfurt. This is the opening bout of our main card. And Zavada said in the build-up, Frankie said, this, this is the fight they offer me. This is not a ranked opponent. This is not a big name, but it's a dangerous name. Again, I'm the one with everything to lose, but I will never turn down a fight. You give me a name, you give me a date, I will be there. Yeah, I like the fact that he called it exactly how it is. I mean, he sees the situation. He's not making any bones about it. He's not complaining, taking advantage of what he can, and, 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 and going to use it for everything he, uh, to push him forward. And basically, it's like, hey, I'm going to display my skill set against a dangerous opponent. And, uh, you know, I'm taking all the risk. Oh, he got caught. Yep, he got caught then, Frank. He stepped in hard with that jab, kept 
both feet in instead of just jabbing with the lead leg and coming back. Sometimes there's a problem guys do, and a lot of boxers teach that. They teach when you jab to slide both feet forward. I'm like, all right, well, that's fine, but it means when you throw a jab, you're in a fight because you're engaging him. Whereas if you see a lot of boxers have a great jab, they throw their jab, but they don't put their whole body forward. They throw a jab, but the lead foot comes forward. They keep their weight on that back leg, and then they come back. So then they can choose whether they want to move both feet forward and engage or not. See, there he engages. When he throws both punches, he's in a fight. And now his jab, what happens is you don't want to use your jab because your jab brings you into war. Instead of a jab being a distance and range finder to maintain range, his jab is constantly bringing him into combat. So when he goes into fight, Zawada's waiting there with a the right hand and the left hook, which is already scored. I think Zavada is struggling as well with the speed of Cartel Frank because Cartel, we talked about that uh, the, the striking pedigree, 30 and one record in kickboxing, 10 and one yep. so far in MMA. And some people are deceptive. You can watch him on tape, but it's not till you're in there and yeah. you get a taste of that speed that you realize how outgunned you are in that department. Yeah, because a lot of speed also comes down to timing. And Cartel's timing is impeccable. Uh, you can seem faster than somebody, and you might even be. I call it like physically faster as far as like, you know, we were to race each other or whatnot or, you know, muscle tissue, you know, but there's a speed of accomplishing a goal. When a guy sees an opening, identifies the opening and pulls a trigger, you might be physically faster, but you're not timing faster. You're not quicker than that guy that has that experience in striking and, and that level that, uh, that like a, a cartel has with the high level striking. He's like, oh, when he sees and pulls the trigger and sees the opening, he's firing it off before you even realize it's opening. So already two minutes, 30 seconds down in this first round. And Cartel surprising a few people with just how well he's holding himself up against this uh, German talisman. Oh, well, he sets down perfectly with the right hand. See how Cartel's weight's lined up, his hip alignment with his right hand, it's loaded. That right hand is dangerous, right? And so what he's doing is he's sitting there firing forward. Now he came forward that time. But he's waiting for uh, Zawanda when he fires forward, knowing that he's going to throw that left hand. Oh. His head stays on line, and he's just like, all right, you throw your jab, you're going to come in, and then I'm going to throw my right hand. Oh, both having success, yeah. though. That was a multi-punch oh. combination. Yeah, he's not going to follow him down. He's going to stand him back up, I'm sure. Yeah. And nice at that time, uh, uh, Cartel displayed his left hook. Yeah, the right hand's loaded, look. For Cartel, his hands there, legs bent, hips shaped. There he's fading back. That right hand's ready to go. If I was Zawanda, I'd be very, you're gonna have to lull him out. You can't just fire forward. He's throwing a jab, and then both his feet are moving towards the right leg, right hip of Cartel. So it's like, man, you're, you're, you're firing your shot, and you're, once your shot's over with, you basically line right up with his right hand. And that's what's happening right now. And then the left hook happens there. And I think Zawanda there is trying to make an adjustment. And he changed the angle by switching oh, stances. Oh, oh. The referee gave a firm warning. Zawanda driving it to the, uh, the cage. Again, he's getting a warning for holding the cage. Now Zawanda takes the back. Big shots as well. The crowd love this. 40 seconds left. Good He's chance. in trouble again for one of the kids. I'm surprised he hasn't lost the point yet. Maybe between rounds he might do. Oh, big slam to the mat there. You know, this the first time I, I could kind of, it's not like you mean to cheat. I've done that before. You just grab, right? Yeah, instinct. you're getting picked yeah. up and you feel your feet going oh. off from under you. Oh, beat down, down position. position. Tough spot here for Aaron Cartel. 16 seconds. Those punches aren't hard enough for them to stop the fight, though. Oh, but elbows would now be. These could elbows be. would be. And look at that, Frank. You talk about veteran experience. And experience is the untangible, right? He's, he's had more fights than uh, Cartel has Zavada. But with that experience, becomes the ability to uh, change and adapt to situations, yes. right? And that's what he did. He changed the range of the fight, engaged the takedown. And it was night and day from him struggling by, by being caught by the counters to him getting it to the mat, the big takedown, yes. straight to the beatdown. That was two different fights in one round. Yeah, and that's smart of him. I mean, right now, Zawanda, look, the way he throws his jab, if tonight the version of him fights uh, Cartel, he's going to lose 9 out of 100 of them because he, the way he throws his jab, the way he lines up on the feet and lines up with, uh, with Cartel, 
Patel's ability to adapt and uh, counter with his right hand and left hook. He's just, he, he doesn't have what it takes. He's jumping in online and he jumps towards the back foot of Cartel. So every time he comes forward, he throws a shot, he's lining up to get hit with shots. So he's not going to fix that right now. So what he did though was he going, oh, you know what? Instead of me standing here and exchanging, I'm getting hit. Let me go ahead and adjust and go for a takedown. And it doesn't have to be a takedown adjustment. It could have been any adjustment. They got him out of that range of going one, two, and coming forward because he was getting the, the, the you know, he was on the worst end of it. And then this was the change, Frank. From the moment they started to close the distance and Zavaldi yep. was able to get hold of him, he got that big takedown. We didn't see him then progress that to the top position. Interesting. Interesting. The odds are now even as we yeah, go into round number two. Oh, you think that's going to be another yep. stoppage between fight rounds? Stops. I guarantee he's going to stop it. That was a big slam. I think he's yeah, done his rib as ribs. well. He dislocated something. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, Cartel, all the body language is saying yeah, that's done. it. Wow. Another stoppage between rounds here. Final check with the referee. That is it. That's it. He's done it. One and done. The return of David Savannah. And it was the turnaround, Frank, on the feet. He was getting caught. He was getting yep. caught bad, and he was having struggling with that no, speed and counter strikes. Yep. It, the way that David throws the strikes, he's going to have to go back and evolve and realize that if other guys, if I was watching the corner, like, hey, when this guy comes forward, he shoots a straight line, he slides both feet in, he makes uh, mistakes, and I guarantee his coaches teach him to do that. I've been in gyms where guys teach that, and I'm like, well, that means every time you fire, you come forward. If you throw your jab, you're in wars. So what happens if you don't want to fight a war? What if you just want to jab the guy and move around and maintain distance? You're going to move both feet towards him? Or you're moving towards him? Anyways, I'll give a lesson here, but uh, that's what occurred with David right now tonight. And great adjustment on his part to sit there and go, well, this isn't how I'm going to win, and this is not the route to victory. And so he changed it up, got a beautiful takedown, a slam. The slam itself is what won the fight. I you think see so. the grimace. I think that was the a, moment, yep. yeah. Cartel's fight, if we see a replay of that, I guarantee you can see. And then when he was in the beatdown position, to his credit, he held on, didn't tap or scream out uh, with a rib that was messed up or injured and, uh, you know, in that position, was able to survive the end of the round, but obviously when he stood up, realized, all right, yeah, it's yeah, it live to fight another day, yeah, I guess. Exactly, but you see yeah, the disappointment on Cartel's eyes as well. He was so upset, that is the way it ended. But for David Zavada, returning to action here in Germany since his last fight in 2018. He was one of the coaches on the Octagon. Challenge Germany season one that Jit will be finishing the, with the finale later this evening. But let's give him that moment. Let's hand it to Andre Novotny to make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, your referee has called a stop to the action of the first round, Dr. Stoppage, and the winner is David Sagat Zavada! David, nach all den Jahren, du hast in der UFC gekämpft, du hast bei KSW gekämpft und jetzt stehst du endlich wieder hier auf deutschem Boden und holst so ein dominantes Finish. Was ist das für ein Gefühl? Äh, als allererstes wollte ich mich auf jeden Fall an ganz Deutschland bedanken, dass ihr so zahlreich erschienen seid. Durch euch, nur durch so wird der Sport auch größer. Auch vielen Dank an Octagon MMA, die diese Möglichkeit ermöglicht haben. Und natürlich, ich freue mich immer sehr gerne, also ich erinnere mich immer gerne zurück an mein UFC-Debüt, das war auch in Deutschland, das war so eine Bombenstimmung, hat so Bock gemacht. Und heute, es war auch einfach geil, die Crowd, wo ich reinkam. Äh, ja, ich freue mich einfach wieder zurück zu sein. So first of all, he says that he wants to thank all the German fans who showed up so numerously here and he just loves to fight here. David, erzähl mal, ihr habt im Vorfeld schon gesagt, ihr wollt ein richtiges Gefecht im Stand hier austragen. Ich würde sagen, da habt ihr nicht zu viel versprochen, beide haben gefeuert aus allen Rohren. Was ist dann passiert? Was hat deine Meinung auch zum Ende des Kampfes geführt? Äh, ich denke, ich habe ihn gebrochen, also konditionell. Er hat es gefühlt, äh, vor allem Boden. Bodenkampf war, glaube ich, auch nicht so seins. Äh, Ringerisch, das ist halt eine andere Kondition. Äh, er kam auch mit 79 Kilo zur Waage. Deswegen habe ich mir schon gedacht, okay, dann ist er wahrscheinlich unfit. Und ja, äh, der Gameplan war, 
ein bisschen im Stand zu halten, natürlich den Boden zu suchen, ihn dort müde zu machen und in der zweiten Runde der Finish. Aber ja, es ging vorzeitig zu Ende, also vor der Eintritt der zweiten Runde. Von daher, ich bin, ich bin zufrieden, mein Team ist zufrieden und wir schauen nach vorne. Danke, danke auch an Erhan für den Kampf, Dankeschön. So he says that he thought he was able to mentally break him. He didn't even make the correct weight for the weight division. And there he already looked that he is, might, might have some trouble with his willpower. David, ich würde mal sagen, am 15.10. bei der nächsten Veranstaltung könnten die Zuschauer vielleicht Lust haben, dich hier wiederzusehen, oder? Auf jeden Fall. Äh Bock vor allem die ganze Challenge, die ganze Tour hat mich echt gefreut. Vielen Dank an, äh, an Pavel und an André für die äh, tolle, tolle Unterstützung auch bei der Challenge. Äh, es war ein super Journey. Jetzt hier der Kampf auch erfolgreich äh, für die erste Nummer Team Zavada. Zweite kommt gleich Martin Brown bringt den Sieg und dann haben wir die Challenges gewonnen, auch die Fights, wenn der Hassan noch den Final Finalsieg holt. Und ja, ich bin auf jeden Fall am 15.10. zu haben. Alles klappt, klären mit meinem Manager. Ivan Djakovic, auch vielen Dank an Abus Magomedov, der mich gekornert hat, der mich fit gemacht hat. Leo Sada natürlich, mein Bodenkampftrainer. Und an ganz UFD Gym, danke an meine Freunde, an Familie Düsseldorf. So he wants to thank Octagon for the whole promotion. It's been an incredible journey and he's very grateful for it. He looks forward to fight here again on 15th of October, again in the Festhalle in Frankfurt. Let's go! Octagon se naplno řítí do Brna. Poprvé do největší haly a s plnou podporou fanoušků. A když do Brna a s fanoušky, tak v plné parádě. Těšit se můžete doslova na mega zápas. Bitvu o titul střední váhy. První titulová obhajoba čeká Patrika Kinsla. V souboji o pás šampiona se mu postaví dvojka střední váhy. Takila King, Alex Ohoré. And I can get him. Přinášíme novou show. Po projektu X a projektu Y přichází projekt Nathan vs. Adam Anep z Ostrova do klece. Bojovali proti sobě v nejtvrdší reality show na světě. Teď se proti sobě utkají v nejtvrdším sportu na světě. Když jsem se v životě nikdy nebyl, tak jdem úplně od základu. Podle mě teda si naozaj se na tak je to absolutně dno a jsem zvedavý sám, jak s tím popasuje. Ale extrémně se na to těším. Tenhle zápas pro mě znamená neskutečnou výzvu. Kdo nebyl na ostrově, jestli nedokáže představit vůbec, co šlo, takže bylo jasný, že to musíme dohrát doma. Adanko, pobude se najet, bojo budeš potrovat vela síl na mě. Brno, Winning Group Arena, 17.9. Lístky již v prodeji na Ticketportal.cz.